Hello, welcome to Scratch 3D Printing. In this video, I'll be taking a look at Orca Slicer's newest version. Let's scratch to this topic. Only a couple of days ago, Orca Slicer released their new version. I haven't really taken a look at it because I want to do it together with you. So right now, I'm going to be going over to Orca Slicer and check out what they have updated in their newest version. Orca Slicer is a slicer for 3D printers that has many amazing features and backed up by amazing communities and it keeps on improving from that point. So enough talking, short introductions, let's just head over to Orca Slicer and see what they have in store for us. We are in Orca Slicer right now in GitHub. Orca Slicer version 2.2 beta release. This is a pre-release so things might change from here to there. But here they have an important security alert. Please be aware that orcaslicer.net is not, okay, it is not an official website for orcaslicer. It may be potentially malicious, I think that's how you pronounce it. The site appears to be generated by AI content and lagging genius content and seems to exist solely to profit from advertisement. So all in all, just do not, okay, do not download or visit orcaflashers.net for any reason if you visit just just don't just don't not do not download anything from there or you are risking yourself getting attacked by unwanted virus or like people might hack your computer or account or, or, or that just do not just don't Go to Orca Slicer and that is what they're saying. The only official platform for Orca Slicer is their GitHub page, which is this. They are not saying this, but just from me and experiences, even if you go to GitHub, right, and you see Orca Slicers, that might not be the official one. So there are a couple things you can check. It's from Soft Fever. People can just create the same name as Soft Fever, right? So first thing just check soft fever and work assessor and it's public and you will know that it's the official one because if you look over here right here the fork right as 780 fork and 6,000 stars 6.7 thousand stars okay it is very popular it has stars has fork and issues over 889 issues this pull request is over 38 if you see like a soft fever or tester and it doesn't have that much fork no stars no issue pull request just don't download from that just find the official one which is this one right here official discord channel which is right here so if you want to join their official discord channel you can go to um github Sophie for Orca Slicers. I will leave this link down below so you will come directly to this page and nowhere else. But speaking of Discord, I'll leave a link down below. If you want to join my Discord, the link will be down below. It's a really great community there. People are helping each other and it's just very amazing. So join the Discord will be linked down in the description. And right here, it is crucial to address the risk of posts by any group that falsely claim to be official or mislead its member. Okay. So if you encounter that, just don't go there and just get out of there right okay with all that said and the warnings out of the way let's go and see what they change or add to orca slicers let's go so what changes orca slicer now support multi-tool printers by soft fever let's go as requested by many orca slicer now has or now support multi-tool prints so like the prusa xl and many 3d printers out there that has two tools head or two print heads assign extruder based on features if we look at this example right here it looks like you can assign like the walls to green and then the infill to red just to mix up and make your parts look really good or exactly how you want number two for this feature is ooze prevention so they have an idle temperature and a temperature variation approach are supported as well so let's say your first print head is printing your other print head is just idling it will maybe be at about 90 to 100 110 depends on the filament it'll be around that 100 or 110 c so that it does not ooze but it will be warm enough and it will be very fast to heat it up so that it just goes straight to printing when it's its turn preheat next tool automatically based on time estimation so yeah very very cool supports all firmware prusa clipper Molin, and many they also support different types of nozzle strain speeds and quality and stuff like that so if you want to use 1.4 millimeter nozzle and a different nozzle that is 0.8 millimeter in one print you can do that the line will automatically adjust based on the percentage of the nozzle 
but you will need to define the line with the percentage and the setting. It is a lot more work, but the finished product is just so much more amazing, right? So the perfect example, they put it right here. The outer wall is thinner, three wall right here, and it's 0.4, and, but the infill is 1.2 millimeters thick, so it's only one solid thing right, right there. New to a change, Printers Pro have added into Orca Slicer, so based on Clipper and Prusa XL 5T, so it looks like they are forking or like adding the stuff that Prusa Slicer has in their slicer and add it to Orca Slicers. I know, it's pretty much like taking the stuff and just putting it to Orca Slicers. There are some people out there that are like, I'm a die-hard fan of Orca Slicers, I'm a die-hard fan of Brutal Slicer, that slicers, and no matter what, I'm not gonna change. I'm gonna keep using this slicers. So <laughs> I'm just saying that, like me, I just love Orca slicers. I don't really want to use any other slicers out there anymore. <laughs> so yeah. Anyway, so yeah, it's good that they add this to Orca slicers because many people are using it and loving it. So it's good to have all these different variations slicers. They have a video right here, but for whatever reason. It cannot be played. I think this, they're just showing the settings where to find it. So maybe if your works, you can watch it, but mine doesn't work. And we can look at the example that they did right here for this cube. They did the cube in bluish and then this thing in yellow. Then the color red at the top, which is the letter. And it works perfectly. Multi-tool print support feature is based on Prusa Slicer. Oh yeah, okay. So Prusa Slicer multi-tool printer. And yeah, thank you so much to Prusa team for their open source work and sharing with the community. Yeah, I love that. I love open source and sharing with the community and I try to do that as much as possible too. They also added a new improved flow rate calibration YOLO mode by Software. Let me just refresh. Okay, so I refresh it and now it's working. So let's look at this. YOLO recommended. <laughs> Okay, oh, I guess it was just that. So I did this like a long time ago and it works perfectly fine actually. But now they have a YOLO mode, which is gonna be a lot better. Yeah, I think I might try that if my printer is starting to um, fail printing. And there's a perfectionist version of it. Wow, look at that. Yeah, that's like 0 0.005. Wow. Detailed tutorials will be updated soon in the wiki. Nice. Enhancement Adaptive Pressure Events by IG Ainaknaka. Sorry if I mispronounced your name. But yeah, it's by him. Okay, he's a really cool dude. It's now here. The adaptive pressure events. Let's go and work on that. now offer automatic adjustment feature for pressure event setting based on real time flow rate and print acceleration. Enable smoother transition in more consistent layer. Nice. So maybe if at one spot it flows way too much, it will automatically detect that and just lessen the flow a little bit. Quite sure exactly how it's working we will do more testing and i will try and figure out what this is actually is of course multi material interlocking man i love this man i love open source you can just use all kinds of people's open source materials adapt it and make it better into a different slicers like orca slicers kira to orca slicers and then if orca slicer adapt that and make it better kira can just take that and just put it into kira again and make it even better and they just keep evolving from there this is just amazing so remember Ultimaker's awesome unlock true multi-material printing with Ultimaker Kira 5.3. Now let's take a look at this example they have here. So it has a cube and now look at that. The red color is interlocking as you can see right there, right? Damn it. I hate it when you click the picture and it does this. The two materials are interlocking with each other, which is very nice. As if you saw my uh, short video that I did a while ago, I did multicolor printing. I made a metal hammer and it does not have this feature yet. And it doesn't stick well. I just lightly tap my table and it just came off. It's going to be a really nice, amazing game changing. People hate that word, but whatever. That would be really nice for multicolor printing. Let's say if you want to print two different filaments together, like TPU and PTG, right? You want to put them together, but it doesn't stick well and it just come apart. But if you have this right now, it will be interlocking. So it'll be a lot harder for it to come apart. Very nice. And yes, thank you to Oti Mega Kira 
for this innovation. Better support for MMU device with filament cutter. So organizer now support multi material device like maybe the Cobra 3 device. Um, I'll try that and if it works, I'll make a different video for it and I will try and get a good profile for you guys but i think it'll be very simple just to do it because they have this g code implemented into the g code of course what, what am i saying park the head at the purge location and then it just purge the certain amount of filaments into a waste bin and they just flush flush it and then we just what cut it something like that support bird object skirt and draft shield not quite sure what this is hopefully it works yeah it, it doesn't work i don't know why but let me refresh. Okay, there we go. It works. Skirt loops. So let's see. Okay. Yeah, that just seemed like a normal skirt. Oh, okay. Combine and per object. Okay, that's very nice. Wow. I never even thought of this being usable. The shield. Okay, let's see. Oh, the shield like that. To be honest, I'm not quite sure what the advantage of that is because... If you print something that's quite high, the shield it just might fail and it's just gonna fall over and attach to your model. Maybe just to help prevent heat inside of it. That could be one thing, but hey, it's there if you want to use it. For me, I don't use skirt anymore. I only use brim sometimes for little contact with the bed, but I don't usually use skirt or brim anymore. But it's good that they have it and it's good that they keep improving on it too. Okay, so there's way, way many more things, fixes that they have added to Worker Slicer's version 2.2 beta release. So if you want to, you can go ahead and look at all of this, but I think we covered pretty much all the main features that they have added into this new updates. And if you scroll all the way down, you will see the assets and you can download the file based on your device that you have. Linux, Mac, and Windows, whichever one you have, download it and then install it on your computer and then it will work. So this is the official link for downloading Orca Slicers. Okay, as we saw there, Orca Slicers has many new features. In this update particularly, I feel like they're going towards multicolor printing because many companies out there are heading towards multicolor printing either by having many tools head or like two to three to four to five print head in one machine or they have a system on the side and allows up to four colors or even eight sixteen multicolor printing by just using only one printer but i feel like many companies out there are kind of heading towards Prusa style of 3D printers with multi-color printing because yes you can do like what Bamboo Lab are doing the Anycubic are doing and Creality is coming up with their own multi-materials system but just think of this you have your 3D printer or just basically look at my um Cobra 3 right here you have your 3D printer right here and then you have another system right here which takes your whole desk and that is not space saving I see you want to get a couple of 3D printers with multi-color printing like this system right here I'm not saying that it's bad it works perfectly but it just takes lots of space and it kind of wastes filament while changing colors. Prusa style of doing multicolor printing is a lot better. Yes, but it does come with a cost and that cost is huge, right? I just checked and it costs 2000 just for the base 3D printer with one printhead. And if you want five printhead, it's going to cost you $3,500. And of course, they can do that because no 3D printer out there is like theirs. They just have a system like this. But these kind of system cost less. This thing just cost me $400 compared to Prusa Extra, which cost $3,500, which is what? I can get about eight or nine of the Corva 3 combo <laughs> and just versus one Prusa Excel. They have no competition at all. The 3D printing industry is heading towards multi-color printing because people love doing that and i love working with multi-color it takes so much more work but the outcome is just amazing i'll leave a link down below for orca slicer's newest version and you can go ahead and download it for yourself and make sure do not download orca slicer from anywhere else except from github and make sure it's the official one actually from orca slicer's themselves or from saw fever there might be somebody else named saw fever just check to make sure it has all the 
correct person and just check to make sure that it has a huge community in there in the github page but that'll be it for this video thank you so much for watching and as always keep on 3d printing